Yeah, Mubak Abdullah, how are you, sir? Good to see you. You're looking good. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walilahi alham, Allahu Akbar kabira, Walhamdulillahi kathiran, Wa subhanallahi bukratan wa asilan La ilaha illallah wahda Sadaqa wa'ada Wa nasara abda Wa a'azza jundahu wa hazma lahzab wahda La ilaha illallah ولا نعبد إلا إياه مقلصين له دين ولا كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى دوريات سيد سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا. Okay, السلام عليكم يا مبارك. We like to welcome all of you all here today, Masjid Muhammad in Jacksonville, Florida. For celebrating our Eid, and those of you all joining us on live on Streamyard, YouTube, and Meta now Facebook, welcome, and we're honored to have you participate with us live, uh, virtually and digitally on the Eid day. You're joining us. Uh, many of you are joining us as you do for the Juma prayer and for the Tarawih we do in Ramadan and for the Ramadan session. So we welcome you to our Eid celebration. So those of you all who are non-Muslims that are watching and listening, and maybe some here, and new Muslims, what I'm reading is called the Eid Takbir. It's a chant. And following in the tradition of our prophet, I will. you heard what I recited or chanted. Uh, so I will uh, give the meaning. And I just saw my dear friend show up here. I was thinking about you on the way over here. Bilal, assalamu alaikum, he would have been leading this chant. So I will, I will uh, explain what we're reading. We say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. God is the greater. God is the greater. God is the greater. La ilaha illallah. There is no God but one God. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Wa lillahi alham. God is the greater, God is the greater, and to him is due all the praise. Allahu Akbaru Kabira, Walhamdulillahi Kathira. Surely God is the greater, his is the abundant praise. Wa subhanallahi bukratun wa asila, and glory is due to him in the mornings and night. La ilaha illallah wahda. There is no God. But the one true God, Sadaka Wa'ada, he fulfilled his promise, Wa Nasara Abda, and supported his servant, Muhammad the Prophet, prayers and peace be upon him. Wa Azza Jundahu, Wa Hazimal Azab Wahda, and he granted his soldiers a manifest victory and inflicted decisive defeat on the allied enemies. La ilaha illallah, there's no God. But he, wala nabudu illa iyahu, and we worship none but him. Muklisina lahu dina, with sincere devotion. Wala karihel kafirun, even though the disbelievers may resent it. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. O Allah, exalt and have blessings and send your blessings on our leader, Muhammad the Prophet, prayers and peace be upon him. Wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad and on the people of our leader Muhammad. Wa 
wa ala ashabi sayyidina muhammad and on the companions of our leader muhammad the prophet wa ala ansari sayyidina muhammad and also on the supporters and the helpers of our leader muhammad wa ala azwaji sayyidina muhammad and on the wives of our leader muhammad wa ala dhuriyati sayyidina muhammad and on the descendants of our leader muhammad wa sallam taslim and kathira and we salute all of them with with much peace so that is called the eid takbir so now it is time for us to make our eid prayer our eid salat and i'll explain to you those of you all who know muslims uh and those who are and those who are non-Muslims joining us, watching us online. Now, before we start the prayer, you have to pay, if you haven't done it already, your zakat tal-fitr or the sadaqah tal-fitr, go by two names, the Eid tax, uh, $15 per member of the family. So if you haven't done that, it should be done before the prayer. Now, those of you all who are joining us online, if you haven't paid it yet, some of you have, you can pay after the uh, prayer. Just don't forget about it. So we remind you to pay the sadaqa or the Eid uh, tax. <clears throat> now, this is the uh, Eid prayer at the conclusion, the culmination of the fast month of Ramadan. And I will have more to say about that during the Eid khutbah. And the way, following the tradition of Muhammad the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prayers and peace be upon our Prophet, the way that the prayer is conducted, we have the prayer first, consisting of two raka, two units of prayer. There is no adhan, call to prayer, and no ikama, saying prayer is ready. We will stand as we will here shortly because it's time for the salat. We will stand in the first raka, the first unit of prayer. Now, I, I'm aware of the different schools of thoughts. So there's no issue to debate. This is Eid Day. Uh, in America, in the community of Imam Wahid D. Muhammad, and even some of our Imams may have not gotten the memo. There's no criticism uh, over the years. We used to do seven takbirs in the first rakah, and then five in the second. Later on, we with the Imam Wahid D. Muhammad, he said, no, we should reverse it. Five comes before seven. So we do five takbirs in the first rakah and seven in the second. And he was explaining it in light of the connection with the mi'raj, the ascension of Muhammad the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because that's what it is, the, the symbolism, the religious symbolism. And the five is before, and then you elevate and go up to the seventh, Eleven. That's the second one, right? So he said five comes before seven. So he instructed us near the latter part of his life. The last instruction he gave us was to change it to uh, from seven in the first to five takbir. Takbir means glorification of God. So five takbirs in the first rakah, seven takbir, and then we make our prayer and we finish the salat. Then we sit. And then we have a khutbah, I will point to the rostrum because I'll be standing behind the podium for a uh, lecture in the tradition of Muhammad the Prophet, prayers and peace be upon them for the Eid. So now we are ready for Salat. So we say Salatul Qiyam, stand for the prayer. <clears throat> and those of you all who need to sit, it's okay. Not a problem. You know, if you we want you to be as comfortable as possible. So if you have to sit, then you sit. <clears throat> and also those of you all who are at home, you can sit also. So we make our intentions to make Salat al-Eid Turaka for Allah, the Lord, 
of all the systems of knowledge. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نبود وإياك نستعين إهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبه اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أكرج المرأة فجأله جثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم جهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر ما يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلها من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصهف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر Allahu Akbar. <coughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> مالك يوم الدين إياك نبض وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Amin. Wadduha wa layli idha saja ma wada'aka rabbuka wa ma qala wa lal akhiratu khairun laka min al-ula wa lisawfa yu'tika rabbuka fatarda alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa 
ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك آئلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فهدي الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده <تصفيق> الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدينا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين تقبر الله الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله الله اكبر الله اكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد we good or you all gonna pull it back some so I don't be on this wall Allah you all keep chanting Allah Akbar Allah Akbar لا إله إلا الله Allah Akbar Allah Akbar ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر God is the greater God is the greater and to him is due all the praise بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أيها المسلمون with Allah's name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer may his peace and his blessings be upon his noble and generous messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد and what follows thereafter of this salutation excellent salutation salute our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, brothers and sisters, assalamu alaykum <clears throat> and Eid Mubarak. Yeah, this is a joyous day, a joyous occasion for those of our Christian family members and friends who uh, may have, may perhaps be joining us. Uh, and those of you all who I know, many of you online around the United States of America, you're witnessing the joyous occasion that all Muslims all over the world, and by the way, uh, Allah's plan is the best plan. All of the Muslims all over the world today are celebrating on April the 10th, Eid al-Fitr. Yeah, uh, that, that's in the Middle East. 
That's in Asia, that's in Africa, and that's here in the United States of America. And we thank Allah uh, brought us along this journey over many years uh, in our old history. Uh, we didn't have this occasion, but that's been a long time behind us. And we thank Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in America and those people who laid the foundation for us to build the right house, the right home for El Islam in America. And thank God for Imam Wadithuddin Muhammad <clears throat> bringing us away from being astray. As I was reciting in the chapter of the Quran, chapter 93, Duha, where Allah says, In Muhammad, we found you wandering and we guided you. And Allah found the nation of Islam wandering and he guided us. And so today, <clears throat> we are able, we are, and not just today, we've been doing this now for almost 100 years. Not exactly one century yet, almost. I think we got about nine more years or so to go. And uh, we'll have one century of Al-Islam in the United States of America. A century is 100 years. So one century out of the 1,400 centuries, uh, four, pardon me, 14 centuries, because uh, the century is 100, so 1,400 years. So we only have, we don't have a whole, we don't have an entire century yet in the United States of America. So don't be so hard on yourself. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. We, we're just getting started. And, and we're running a race uh, that is like the, it's a marathon. And Allah says, uh, the race is long and burdensome. But you're not going to find a whole lot of them willing to go that long run now. They'll, they'll get in that 40-yard sprint that they have all the athletes run, <laughs> quick 40, or run the 100-yard meter. They say, well, no, this one's going to take you a few generations. Uh, well, I'll see y'all once y'all get it out. <laughs> not good, not ready for that long run. So we are very grateful. We thank Allah for blessing us to be one with all the Muslims all over the world. This is our celebration day, uh, Eid al-Fitr. Now, what is Eid al-Fitr? Why are we here? What are we doing? Well, we just completed 29 days of the fast for those of us who started fasting on Tuesday, March 12th, uh, uh, started the Ramadan on March 11th. This is 29 days for us. Those who started the day before us, may Allah bless them, they had 30, we had 29. So at the conclusion of the fast month, for all Muslims, we celebrate, and the celebration takes on different characteristics. There, the only consistency in the Eid celebration is the Salat, what I just finished, is the prayer, that all Muslims do the same prayer together. But I was reading something about the uh, Malaysian Muslims. And I thought it was just so wonderful. Uh, they take this time to go on a pilgrim to visit their relatives. So after the prayer, the whole city, the cities in Malaysia, the Muslim in there, they become desolate. The people leave and they go out to the families, go to the other cities, the villages. So they call it their annual pilgrimage where they head home. Now, I didn't know that. That's a wonderful uh, occasion for them. Egypt, they, they, they brought, well, they, they do this every night. They, they blast cannons to, for iftar. And when it's time for the celebration, you can go online now and see a lot of these things now. So we have the technology where we can see what other Muslims are doing around the world. So we are developing our traditions in America, our customs in the United States of America. And because America is a diverse multifaceted kind of environment, nation, we're going to see uh, different social and different cultural expressions of how the Muslims from all over the world celebrate this wonderful day of Eid al-Fitr. So there's no one way to do it now. So we, we want to come up with our traditions. We have some. We want to make sure, and especially those of you all who have children, Make it just as big as the Christians, or even bigger, as the Christians make Christmas. Yeah, buy them some gifts, your children. Take them out, have a wonderful time. So they, so they uh, learn to love, and it's instilled in them, hey, this is our celebration day is coming now. Don't worry about Christmas. We got Eid coming. 
and we have another one following this in three months. Say, so, say so we got two, two similar like Christmas coming. Well, it's not Christmas, but you got two Eids. So, so Abdul, a little, little, little Hakeem, you don't get everything in this first Eid. Hold on, Daddy got you on the next one. Don't worry about it. You got a second one coming. And you come up with your own decoration. You see these beautiful decorations the sisters put up here? Yeah, Sister Keisha and Lizelle and Levant. And I told them, put it up early. They had the Ramadan Mubarak, and now it says Eid Mubarak. So we want to develop our own traditions in the United States of America. So Eid, what is it? Eid, E-I-D. Uh, famous psychologist, famous named Sigmund Freud. You heard it right. That, that's his name. I didn't give it to him. He said he was a fraud. That's what his name says. I'm a fraud, Sigmund Freud. And most of his theories have been debunked. But he said that the human being functions principally on the id, I-D. So you have some Muslims that don't, it's, it's difficult, it's okay. But learn to pronounce it correctly. So the, the pronunciation comes from back here. Aid. Aid. It's iron. Aid. If you say id, id, that's from here, from the front of the mouth, right? So that's the appetite. Id. Aid means what keeps coming over and over and over. It keeps reoccurring. It keeps reoccurring. It keeps reoccurring. It keeps reoccurring. Like the seasons keep coming. Summer, winter, fall, spring, right? You can, you, can, you can set your clock to it, set your, your life to it. You know these cycles in the creation keeps coming, keeps coming. So Eid is what happens over and over. Now there's another meaning to this now. Allah says in the Quran, say it is he, God, that starts the process of creation. And then he aided them. He repeats it all over again. Yeah. And he taught the prophet to tell the believers, say, when they get to the other side, they're going to look around and say, why, well, this looks like what we had before, <laughs> but on a higher level. So God keeps repeating it. He keeps repeating the creation. Now, there's a message there for us. We, we live. We exist. But we repeat our life. He started it, God. Then he gave us the ability to reproduce it. Think about that. We don't, to, to, to have more human beings, God doesn't need to step in to have more human beings. He gave us that ability. He gave us the ability to produce human beings. The difference is we can't do it by ourselves. Only God stands alone. We have to mate to reproduce ourselves. Fitta, what is al fitta? Al fitta means, so if we say Eid al fitta, returning, coming back to what? Al fitta. So let's go to the Quran, chapter 30, verse 30 for the fitta. 30, 30. That's on TV now, 30-30. You think it's an accident? 30-30? And they tell the life story of people. They start with their origin, 30-30. And we've been reading 30. 30 juza sections of the Quran. And when you finish those 30, it returns you back to your fitra. Let's see. Bismillah rahman rahim What Allah says about this fitra, the nature, the natural nature. فَأَقِمْ وَجْحَكَ لِدِينِ حَنِيفًا فِتْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَتْرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيْمَ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ God the mighty spoke the truth. It's a revelation to Muhammad the prophet. Translating now, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, chapter 30. And dear Christians, 
dear Christians and our family members, the title of this chapter. You ready for this? Aroma. The Romans. The Romans. The Christian, specifically, the Christian Romans. Mm hmm. Or the Roman Christians. And they were being marked. They were in a battle for their survival as a civilization, a nation, much like the United States of America. And the disbelievers were making fun of Muhammad the prophet and his followers. Say, oh, Muhammad, haven't you heard? Now, this is me paraphrasing this now. Haven't you heard about the other religious community? They're getting their butts whipped on the battlefield. And Allah revealed to the prophet. I'm going to translate what I read. Allah revealed to the prophet. Rum. The Roman Empire has been defeated. Verse 3. In a land close by, Muhammad. But they, the Roman Christians, even after this defeat of theirs, they will soon be victorious. In just a matter of a few years. And it happened. That what Allah told Muhammad the prophet about the Christians. Say, don't worry about the mockery that the disbelievers are making to you. Saying, uh-huh, you see, we're going to defeat you the same way we defeated the Christians in the Roman Empire. And God gave the prophet a whole chapter on the Romans. Now, why did I mention that? Well, how can the Muslims be against Christians if the chapter in the Quran is out of the Roman Christians or the Roman Empire? And speaking up, and on behalf of the Christians, that they be successful. So, little young brother, I forgot the city now, because I just couldn't believe that in 2024, we still have silly people like that, but this is the world we live in. So, little young brother, and you all who are youth in here, and you all listening out there all over the land and around the world, do not become a member of ISIS to go burn down churches. That's what the young man in America was trying to do. But he wasn't aware that he was disclosing his plans to an undercover FBI agent. So he walked them through his whole operation. I'm going to burn down the church. I'm going to shoot the Christians. I'm going to do this. And then when they were reporting this, I'm saying to myself, well, he, this young man never read the Quran, obviously not. He was radicalized probably online because had he read the Quran, he'd read right here, just this one place. And then Allah says in another part of the Quran, said, do not pull down monasteries, churches, and Muhammad the prophet. I, I read this during the Ramadan session when I was reading from the history, the seal of the prophet. And I was sharing with you what a prophet told him when he defeated a group. He said, do not burn the churches. Don't break the crosses and don't stop the Christians from practicing their religion. So you tell me how this little young 18-year-old person in the United States of America thought it was okay because he's uh, radicalized by ISIS. He's radicalized. He's an American citizen. He's radicalized by ISIS to go out and burn churches? And you think that's a jihad? Well, I'll tell you what it is. Flames coming to get you punishment brother so our young folk don't get caught up in that study your religion study the life of Muhammad the prophet and you will find that the prophet wasn't against Christians and Jews he was against disbelievers Catholic Kufar you think the Kufar Christians and Jews not unless they become Kufar but Christians become Kufar there are some Muslims that you might become Kufar and some of them have become kufar. Kufar is plural for Catholic. Uh, those that reject faith and they reject God. Hence our Juma Friday, Rahim, obey Allah and obey the messenger. So set thou thy face steadily and truly to the faith. Fitra. What is this fitra? 
establish Allah's handiwork, God's work in this life. How? On the pattern on which God on the pattern on which he has made all mankind, men and women all over this earth. And do not let tabdila. Do not let tabdila. I'm going to repeat it three times. Do not repeat it three times here because we live in America. La tabdila. Le khalqillah. Do not change the work that God has brought about, that God has created. God has created men to be men. And no, you can't go pe compete on the women's sports teams. Hiding your masculinity because you want to be a fake female. La tabdila la khalqillah. Do not change the creation that God has created. God has made males to be males, females to be females. And God says, Laysa dhakara kal unta. And no way is the male like the female. You start messing with God's creation, messing with God's nature, the natural order that God has created, and you're going to find yourself in a world of trouble. Well, where's the evidence of that? <laughs> All around you. Establish Allah's handiwork according to the natural pattern on which he has made all mankind. Let there be no change in what God has created, his work. Now that is the religion. That is the religion. That is the religion. Say, that is the religion? Well, what about Ramadan, fasting, salat, no. Those are practices and rituals. But the essentials and the essence of the religion is to follow the natural path that God has put in your nature. And if you follow the natural life that God has put in your nature, you're on the right path. So well, 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 what about the prayer? You got to pray. That helps you. Got to give charity. That relieves selfishness. All these things benefit us. Fast and Ramadan benefit us. But if you stay on the natural course, the natural pattern that God has created, the fitra, if you stay on that path, oh, that is the essence of your religious life that you have held on to the decency, the honor, the dignity, and the integrity that God put in your nature, in every human being's nature, when we were brought into this world as little babies. Innocent, not guilty of any crime. Innocent, no thieves, no prostitutes and drug the Innocent, no murderers and killers. Innocent, no drug users. Innocent, no cake cocaine abusers. Innocent, no weed smokers. Innocent, no alcohol drinkers. Innocent. And then the world started changing our nature. No disrespect to mother and father, innocent. And then the world started telling you, young folk, ah, you don't tell me what to do. Well, I remember when you couldn't speak. <laughs> innocent. You've lost your innocence. So Allah, out of his mercy, he gave Muhammad the prophet Ramadan. Yes. For those that are at the age of puberty and older and not sick, weak, and infirm, Allah gave Muhammad the prophet Ramadan. Say, I, I know the world. And, and God says this, and the prophet gives it to us as I conclude this. When Allah, there's a picture in the hadith, when Allah created the natural world, hmm? the fitrah, the natural world. 
he showed it to his angels. And the angel Gabriel, or Jabril, when he saw it, he responded to this beautiful natural world. He said, oh, my Lord, how can any creature go wrong in a world so beautiful? They can't help but be like angels. Allah said, well, this is in chapter 2. I already have angels that obey me. They don't have a choice. But I'm going to create something from this creation that I have made that I'm going to give them limited free will to make choices. Whether they want to follow the natural path or go astray. I'm going to give it to them. And the angel said, God, uh, you know what's going to happen when you do that? He said, yeah, I have knowledge you don't have. He said, God, you know they're going to kill each other. He said, I know. So this stuff that we watch it, watch it on TV, the killing of the uh, Palestinians in Ukraine and Sudan and all these wars and all this killing. And you, you think God didn't know this? This was brought up in the beginning by the angels. Say, God, we, 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 you, you made us obedient. Why you want to create something that has the possibility and potential to be disobedient? God said, because I know what you don't know. I'm going to free them in this creation. And then when Allah showed Jibreel the creation, when the Satan that he allowed to go in to test his humans, Jabril looked at it and said, oh, my Lord, how can any creature go right in a world this corrupt? And Allah says, I guide whomsoever I will to a path that is straight, and I leave strain whomsoever I will, and said, Satan will only get those who want to be got. I put it like that. You're going to get got. That's how the young people talk. So God freed the human being. Go. Make your choices. And too many of them became like wild horses let out of the corral. Just running, as Allah says. Uh, beasts herded together in human habitation. The beasts let loose. And I saw a movie once said, release the kraken. And I don't want to be racist, so I don't want to say what it sounds like. <laughs> That's their language, not mine. <laughs> so Allah gave Muhammad the prophet Ramadan. He gave the Christians fasting before the Muslims. That's in our book, isn't it? He gave... And, and Christ Jesus fast and said, what? Get thee behind me, Satan. That's a sign for his people. You, you want to have some victory over the Satan to say, fast. And Moses, fast. So the Jews had fasting. The Christians had fasting before the Muslims. And God said, fasting was, is prescribed to you like it was to those before you. Because fasting is, as Muhammad the prophet said, a siyam ujunnah. Fasting is an armor, a protection, a shield from the forces and the influences that shaitan is constantly shooting in the environment. So a lot of his mercy. And that's what it said of us, of what it said of this month, said uh, the prophet, he said, the first 10 days is Allah's mercy. The second 10 days, Allah's forgiveness. And the last 10 days, you have been wiped clean and delivered from your sins. So you got to start all over again now. And as you, you, you put markers on the whiteboard, take the eraser and erase it off of there now. You can erase it all. How do we erase it? The sin. Follow up a bad deed with a good one. Teach it with the prophet. And it will be your eraser. Did you hear that? Follow up the bad with the good and it will be your eraser. Just wipe it out. Pray five times a day and it will be your eraser. 
Come to the Juma, pray, or attend the Juma. It will be your, all of this is teaching the Prophet Muhammad. It will be your eraser. Give the zakat and pay the charity. It will be your eraser. Feed a hungry person, someone in need, and it will be your eraser. And those who had nothing to give say, yeah, Rasulullah, messenger of God, I don't have anything to erase these sins with. He said, well, your eraser, I'm using the word eraser. He said, your eraser will be restrained from hurting people, and that's your eraser. You ain't got nothing. You got control of yourself. How about let's not knock an old lady down this weekend? How about let's not break in somebody's house, God forbid? How about let's not do follow the fools among the young wild beasts uh, with this new crazy fad called smash and grab, stealing other folks' stuff? How about not doing that? And not only how about you not doing it, how about telling your cousin Bobo and Ray Ray and Junwug, hey man, this is not what we are all about. This is not what we're supposed to be doing. Restrain yourself. And that's what Ramadan has done for us. No, most of us are not like that. I'm just, but you have to remember something I tell you all the time. I'm not just speaking to you. I'm speaking to people around the country and around the world. And they are all age limits. So I have to always be conscious. And I'm not speaking only to Muslims, even though this is our blessed celebration day. So let us be mindful of the mercy, the blessings of forgiveness, and the deliverance from the hellfire. And Allah has brought us back. Eid al-Fitr returned us back to the natural state that we were in when we were born into this world as new babies. Assalamu alaikum, Eid Mubarak. Give greetings to your brothers and sisters. And uh, don't, you know, we still got have a uh, uh, protocol for, for the virus, even though much of it is dissipated, but the other bacteria and germs out there. So just be a little careful on the hugging and all that, you know, a little fist bump don't hurt anything, all right? And uh, we have some refreshments. <clears throat> Now, let me say something about this while I'm online. Two things. One, if you haven't paid your uh, e-tax, you can still pay it. You can still pay the Sadaqat al-Fitr. Those of you all online, you can go to Rahim on Q, alislamworldwideministry.com. You can pay your Zakat al-Fitr online. Those of you all who have been doing it, thank you very much. May Allah continue to reward you. Eid Mubarak to all of you all out there. Uh, the second thing to know about Eid. Now, we're going to have Ahmed, am I correct, Saturday to Eid at uh, what time? 12 o'clock here at the Masjid, right? So we're going to have food and festival. Now, here's what we all should keep in mind about the Eid. Listen to this very carefully. And I shared this with my, my friend Uthman. <clears throat> the Eid is a community celebration, okay? So all of us collectively should pitch in for whatever food we're eating back there and whatever food we are having for the Eid feast. We don't leave it up to one or two persons now. We don't do it that way. And I'm talking to all of you all around the country. The Eid is a community social celebration and the responsibility and weight falls on the shoulders of all of us to provide the breakfast, provide the meals. So when you all finish, I know you paid to eat tax. See Ahmed back there. Ahmed put a cap on top of that. And then because some folk have uh, put some money up front, and we want to make sure we at least let them know, hey, you don't carry this weight all by yourself. All right? So Ahmed know who they are. That will be separate. And we will collectively say, well, brother, sister, thank you all very much for bringing the food and everything we're going to have Saturday, but it's not all on you. This is a collective celebration, a community celebration, and we all are responsible. Assalamu alaikum, Eid Mubarak. So let us get up, enjoy this day, enjoy with your family, your children, greet your brothers and your sisters, and you all are looking so wonderful. And and, and I see the, uh, the young man back there, well, Zaheem with that nice blue suit on. Well, you pretty sharp back there, brother. Yeah, he's sharp today. 
Eid Mubarak. And thank you all for joining us on YouTube, Facebook, StreamYard. Join us Friday, 1.30 p.m. for our Salat to Jumaa. And I've already given you the subject matter, obey Allah and obey his messenger. We'll have reminders of the fast month of Ramadan. Again, Eid Mubarak.